Hey, welcome back to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. And I've got to tell you, we've been getting a lot of requests for anodized aluminum welding, and more specifically, clear anodized aluminum welding. Uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of questions coming from the uh, tuna boat uh, manufacturers, the tuna tower manufacturers, and so what we brought to the uh, set today was some samples of material that come from these uh, tuna tower manufacturers. So uh, what they do is they, uh, they buy the aluminum, and it's typically a 6061 or a grade such as that, very weldable. Uh, you have to add filler, otherwise you're gonna get a cracking problem. But it's very clean looking, and the reason it's clean looking is it's been clear anodized. Now, what that means is it's been anodized, it's got a coating on it that is so hard that it's very difficult to even penetrate. So when you light an arc on it, it tries not to start, start the arc. In fact, sometimes you gotta put a little file mark just to get it to get grounded. So uh, just know that it looks pretty, but when you start to weld it, it's just absolutely a nightmare. Now they do that for saltwater corrosion reasons. So when this is manufactured in 20 and 30 and 40 foot tubes, tube links, uh, they can manufacture it, they can anodize it, then they can cut it, manufacture it. The last thing that happens is it gets welded. So uh, how do we weld this stuff? And uh, I've had the advantage of going down to Florida and talking to some of the manufacturers. And I've even had one guy that was an Islander that taught me something I had never known about welding aluminum. So what we're gonna show you today is a technique called the bump technique. And for all the techniques that you've learned in the past in TIG welding, throw them out the window because they don't work on this. Now you gotta remember this is about one mil thick. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna try to punch through this material and, and get it attack started. So the bump technique, and there's several methods of bump techniques, but really what it is, it's you're hitting this material hot and heavy, and we're gonna be using about 195 amps, and it's a tack spot, adding filler. And then you index, tack spot, add filler, and you do that all the way around. Now, I've talked to several people that they don't like the appearance of it. Uh, some people like to leave it as is. And, and what they ultimately do is they'll spray it with some kind of a, a spray paint, aluminized spray paint, and it looks pretty good. Other people like to smooth the weld out. So the second pass that you put on here is only an option. Uh, we're going to demonstrate that, but the second pass will smooth it out and you have no ripples whatsoever. So uh, just know that uh, this material thickness is about 150, 160 thousandths uh, wall thickness. We're using a machine that its maximum power is 195 amps. And we're also using, we're using a thumb control or a button. All this is, is an on off switch. So all the techniques that I've taught in the past, and of course I favor the foot control for 99% of all my welding, this particular application, we're gonna use a button. So on, off is all we need. So it's just a very special technique. It's a very uh, dirty technique. When I say dirty, I mean that we have to punch through this anodize, and it's tough to do because it leaves little dirty particles in your weld. And there's not much you can do about that. It's just a contaminant. You know, the welds are, are still significantly strong. So uh, they've been doing this for years and years in this industry. So uh, just want to show you my setup, uh, and this is something that I prefer. Uh, I'm gonna be running AC, AC welding. This is an inverter, and it does have enough punch at 195 amps, but I do have to run 220. So if you're in the field and you need to get some extra punch and you wanna run off of a, a portable or you have a machine that's 115 volts, you're gonna have to do something like go a 7525 mix and gas. And that, what that is is 75% argon, 25% helium. And that'll give you the, the punch that you need. Now, I like using, obviously, a gas lens. And it's got a series of screens in it. So it gives a better gas coverage. So I put my stubby gas lens on this particular torch. I've got a number eight cup on here. And just, just for the purpose of being portable, because a lot of these field repairs are portable, and you don't necessarily have a tungsten grinder, I've got this uh, stuff called Kim Sharp, and uh, all you have to do is light an arc and take the lid off and swirl this around, and it'll sharpen up your tungsten to where you want it. So uh, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm gonna get all my safety gear on, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, this is a uh, shout out to Joe Zinsk. 
<clears throat> Joe, we're going to do the bump technique as you had requested. And there's there's several ways of doing it. Uh, I'm I'm left-handed, so you're going to see that my torch hand um, is going to be the dominant one for doing the tacking. Now, what I'm doing is I've got a button on my torch, and I hit that button, and it ramps up to 200 amps very quickly, and it creates a puddle. I dab a lot of filler in real quick. I'm using 332 diameter, 5356. And once the first tack is made, the rest of them get fairly easy because arc initiation is a big deal. It's tough to break through that oxide. So once I get one tack and I get some filler, uh, now I've got um, some bare material that I could start the arc each time. So uh, all I do is I, I strike the arc, add filler, index a little bit, and you'll see that there's a little whipping action, maybe a little motion left to right, up and down, uh, just to catch both sides. And there's all kinds of techniques of whipping, so you just gotta kind of find the one that you like the best. That's an, another good example. I'm, I'm actually going over an old tack, you know, and one of your first tacks is the most difficult because this material just doesn't ground very well. And you can see I got a little motion going in my, in my tack. And I even, I whip and then I kind of back up to my puddle. Okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to do an overlap. I've, I've done the weld 360 degrees, and I've got probably about uh, four or five more bumps before I hit the overlap. And you can see uh, heat is building up. It's actually flowing pretty nicely right now. The arc is starting very consistently now, and I'm going to hit a rough area at the overlap. Now, remember, I have a button only. Um, on my torch so I can't feather the overlap out so I I turn it on off on off and that is my feather out so I don't leave a big huge crater crack okay now that we have finished welding I just want to show you the the technique that was used the bump technique or the the uh, the tacking indexing there's all kinds of ways of calling it but basically what I did was I created a puddle and I hit it hot and heavy at 190 amps, got liquid on each side, jabbed the rod in there, just connect the two materials together just to get it to flow. And then I, you know, I was off of it pretty quick. It re-solidified, I did it all over again. So I got this stack of dimes effect. In fact, all the techniques that I'm using on the, uh, on the tuna tower type parts is, goes against all other techniques that are taught in aerospace welding or any other type of welding. So it's got its own little niche. Uh, even, even this torch, this torch is a 26 style torch and I usually I trash it because it's so big and awkward, but in this particular case, it's my friend. It's a, a torch that'll handle 200 amps. It's got the button on the top so I can do the tack and I can do the stacking of the dimes. So for this industry, this is the 1% of the time that you'll see me using this type of the setup and, and say that it's absolutely a great setup. Again, I got a gas lens in there so I give it a little better gas coverage. Now, once, once you take a look at this stack of dimes, there's some of the companies don't like that look. So you can actually go right over it again without filler. Now just keep in mind this did have filler and your selection of diameter filler material, it's your personal preference. I happen to be using 5356, uh, 1 8 inch diameter. Now you can drop down to 332, whatever you feel comfortable with. Now if you decide that you want to smooth out your weld, you don't have to add filler at all. And just start the arc and just flow right over it. And this is the type of appearance that you're going to get. Now, this well took some time just because you have to add and dab and start and stop. This weld goes very, very quickly, so don't think that it's a, a huge added cost if you decide to incorporate that into your procedure. So, I want to thank all of you for contacting us about Tuna Towers and clear uh, anodized aluminum welding. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.